Spawning in the west of the map, playing in red, we have got Hera playing as the Chinese. So hopefully, guys, we should be fine now with sound. And we're off and running. So, Beastie, we were chatting just before we got going about this, that Abbasid's looking much stronger since the most recent patch. And this gives be a bit more of an opportunity in this particular game to get off to a running start, especially... Uh, with each player having had not so much time to to prepare. So can you just talk a little bit about the Abbasid Chinese matchup in general and what we might expect to see from both players? Uh, so first of all, I, I find it weird that Hera took Chinese. Um, Hera doesn't play Chinese from what I know, or at least it's his least played Civ. So the fact that he took Chinese on the first map, uh, Potentially being one of the worst saves right now, I find it very uh, curious pick. But uh, I think B's honestly best chance to win is because China cannot get siege fast enough. Just rushing castle on one base and just uh, spamming siege on the on the field as Abbasid might be a really good idea for for B to do, because I think China won't be able to match the the siege numbers basically. Because the Imperial officer won't be able to pump out siege as, as before, and Abbasid, you know, making the siege with their units can definitely uh, outproduce them by quite a bit. Now, Abbasid is definitely one of those sieves that people wanted to see get a little bit of a buff. Um, a sieve that had been very, very weak towards the bottom of the tier list for quite a long time, probably since the very beginning of the of the game, where they've really struggled. Um, in multiple tournaments, we've seen them be the only sieve that's not picked. Uh, do you see Abbasid now in general as being kind of right up at the top of the pecking order, right at, at the top of the, like, up there as one of the more competitive civs? Uh, I mean, I wouldn't put him next to Mongols and Delhi, which I think are the two best civs right now. Um, but they did get a lot better, I'll just say that. I, I do think that they are, in a way, you know, about to be explored more and more. Because, the, like I said, the age up thing is something that people are going to have to play with. They definitely did become a lot better. Um, it just kind of matters also what which map you play them on, because they're not great on hybrid maps. But you know, map like Altai, they're they're very they're very good on, on Dry Arabia. They're also very good. So uh, it's something that people still have to you know explore. And also the developer said they're looking into buffing camels somehow. So that's going to be interesting to see once that is done as well. Because I think they still intend to buff Abbasid further, which is going to be interesting because by the time they decide to do that, Abbasid might be in a good position and then if they buff units, they might be, uh, you know, uh, up there in the ranks, I'll just say that. So we'll take a little look over and see, we've got the Barbican of the Sun already going up now for Hera. Um, and anything so far that's giving you an indication of what we might expect to see from these players. Map generation looks to be relatively fair. This is a, a an event that we do give uh, seeded maps to. So, I mean, it does look to be relatively fair. Taking a look around both of those bases, both of them have got a hunt pretty much equidistant from each other. So that's definitely a good start. Um, Imperial official uh, supervising that mill. So, yeah, going to be very interesting to see what happens in terms of not having the the ability to supervise like before kind of a very significant change to china um so yeah you're expecting b you know b, to be able to mass some siege here so, certainly something that's going to be able to help him out and be very uh efficient so anything that's given away so far anything like that you weren't expecting in this game so far we've got um i mean one thing that is uh, not necessarily odd but neither player is going for stone which both of these saves are known to go for boom so neither player going for stone they should be mining stone at this point already so if they scout each other and see no stone they can know that this is going to be either feudal or a castle and the way you can tell a difference if it's going to be feudal aggression or castle is by if your opponent is still going for gold and how much gold they're mining so currently they're both Two and three workers on gold, which most likely means that they're staying on feudal. Oh, and Hera is actually moving workers for um, <clears throat> for stone, so he will be going for second TC. And I think he kept workers on gold, maybe to get to 200, so he can go Song Dynasty as well. But he will need a little bit more food for that. The other side, B is actually going for camels. Uh, that's that's interesting. Just a one archer range, just camel opener. Uh, I'm kind of curious what he decides to do with that. Camels are 
I, I would say in a very weird spot. They feel like really bad at times, but at times because they're so mobile, if you don't have the correct response, they're super annoying to kill because they do have high HP. So I'm not sure if he plans to harass with this or what the, the plan is, but B is rallying workers to the gold. So I think he might go for what I mentioned earlier, which is... Oh, never mind. He's going for stone. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess we'll see what he's about to do. So we're not quite sure what B's got going on. We'll take a little look back at Hera and see what he's got going on. Uh, we'll take a little look at his viewpoint. Now I've got that Imperial official. Looks like he's just supervising the... Well, this one's supervising the, the wood gathering. And then we've got one on the... Nicely placed on the mill also gathering from those uh, huntables then. And a third Imperial official over here by the stone. Um, so is that... It looks like we've got another TC going to be going up for Hera here. And a... Pretty boomy looking opening to the match. Maybe we were expecting to see a little more aggression from the Abbasid player, but he's now got a couple of villagers being sent out and they look to be on a mission and have something on their mind. In fact, another, well, now we've got an archer coming up behind them. So it looks like we're probably going to get, what are you thinking? Some, some aggressive towers here. What are you thinking these villagers are up to? Yeah, he's definitely going to tower the, uh, the, the forest. I actually really like this one camel. Because he saw that there's no production building, so he rushed the camel and actually prevented all the food gathering for Hera. Which, if you look, Hera is not gathering uh, food. He's trying to gather deer on top, but that is going to be super slow. And even though he's got the stable, he actually has no food to produce. He only has two horses queued up. That This TC will be stopped, and this is actually really uh, turning bad for Hera. He's going to pull all the workers to try and build that TC. But this is something that's extremely inefficient. Uh, he has 13 workers running, you know, whole screen from the wood to TC, and now they're going to probably move back. Which, again, you know, not something you want to be doing and moving around your workers as much. So that tower is now going up. Now we've also got a horseman coming at the same time together with the archers. In the meantime, Hera getting down that town center, he puts well, about 15 villagers on top of that town center to get it up very, very fast. But he doesn't manage to get, the, get it up. He's got a couple of horsemen of his own now that have managed to uh, to pop out. Tower is almost up. By the way, we might be on slightly different times. I'm on 7:52, just just so you know. Now the camel archer has just about caught up, uh, has uh, got himself into the play, and yeah, 3D B looking very nice, camped up right outside Hera's base right now. Hera is definitely the one that's pinned in. Um, and we see this happen quite a lot, where it's very hard once you're pinned in like this to break out and. Hera definitely seems to be the one in that position, be feeling quite relaxed, also putting up a second outpost right now. Um, and yeah, just obviously waiting to get the, the wood in for doing that. He's actually got, not got very much wood in the bank, so every time wood comes in, he's now going to be using them for keeping those output outposts going up around the thing. Now, he's managed to force off Hera from this, uh, from this mill, as predicted by you, which makes life a little bit awkward. Imperial official just manages to survive there, and... Hera now the one seemingly pretty blocked in. What's he? What's he? I mean, th my first thoughts are what's Hera going to be doing about food in this situation? He definitely looks like he's soon going to start having some food problems, Beastie. Yeah, this is really bad for Hera. Um, this deer, like he has the deer on the side, but if you look, all the other barriers are actually where the towers are. So he has no other access to food. There are no deer on the left side of the map. Uh, boars are in the middle. The other deer pack is on the bottom, so he's going to have to go super early farms, which, again, is viable, but it's something that you do not want to do, because if you go for early farms, it will just delay your castle even more. If I think what, what B should do, honestly, with these towers right now, just continue towering like this, get the wood line under control, and then just maybe go castle and just mass siege. Because Hera is going to have an extremely hard time getting to castle with the economy as it is currently. Because his workers are just kind of all over the place right now. And that mass is just growing and growing from B. Um, now it's becoming you know, quite a significant number of horsemen and archers. And they're going to start really being very, very annoying. I feel that this is one of these games where that we often see where... Hera's way back into this game is to force one very, very favorable fight. And if he manages to pull off one very favorable fight... Um, then it's, you know, then everything can suddenly turn. And we see Hera playing that way quite a lot, that 
He's got such very good micro, very high APM that he, even when he looks to be in very significant trouble, he, he does pull it back in one in one big fight. But now we've got a battering ram coming up from B. So it looks like he's going to start pushing the issue quite soon. And that's going to make life a little bit difficult for for um, Hera when these rams start coming in. It's very, very hard to obviously going to start trying to siege that down with villagers. But... Uh, Becomes hard, especially if they get um, picked off. So, going to be very interesting what happens. Ram starts moving in right now with the archers right behind. At the same time, we've got... Well, he tries to raid on the southern wall, but the, the palisade wall does manage to stop him doing that. And we've got the fight going off in two different areas uh, going on right now. As he pushes in with the ram, and he starts trying to siege through this wall at the same time. So... Hera now bringing some villagers to try and take down the ram, but they're going to get taken down by a few of the archers. Here we can see on two sides of the screen, quite a lot of action going on. Some damage taken to the ram, but not too much. And he's actually almost all the way through that wall. And when he gets through that wall, there's going to be a lot of horsemen running in. And he realizes there's actually a gap in the wall. And he doesn't need to go through it because that tree was chopped down. And now he's got the horsemen in. And Hera looking in a bit of trouble here, Beastie. Yeah, I think the decision to go for a ram, I for completely forgot <laughs> that Avacid can make a, a siege without uh, research. I actually really like this because the second TC is, I'm not going to say misposition, but if your second TC is in front of your main TC, the enemy can just kill it. Uh, for those that don't know, if you put units inside a second TC, you cannot retarget. So this ram will always be able to hit the TC while it's basically protecting all the archers because the TC cannot kill the archers. So he's just going to keep going in and out with rams until this TC is down. And like I said, the reason you see no units from Hera is because uh, his food income is just not great. And the reason he's trying to get to castle is because he cannot gather any wood. So he cannot even attempt to defend with archers because he has no wood for it. So I think he's trying to reach castle and maybe go into knights or transition to palace guards. And he has enough for a uh, clock tower. But the question is, where does he go from here? Because if his plan, I think, might be to just produce palace guards or knights and try to repel B that way. The issue that I have right now with B's play, or what's going to become a problem very soon for him, is if castle units come out for Hera, he will not have anything to deal with them, and he should maybe start looking into transitioning to castle as well. Yeah, I guess he's just looking to keep that pressure on enough right now. I guess there's two. he's got two directions what he can do in this position. He can either push and just try to absolute GG right now, or he can pull back, take the fact that he's managed to get a huge economic advantage, get up to castle and fight on even terms. But it looks like he's going to choose the former and just keep this push going as he's now got some stone walls coming up in, in his, in Hera's base. I think even with Hera up in castle age, this looks like this is a lot of pressure. He's about to fight a lot of damage being taken. Loads of farms have gone down. That town center is going to start uh, very soon going to start being in some significant trouble too. Hera's trying to bring those horsemen in and wasn't quite spotted in time there by 3D. That's again took some more damage to, uh, in fact, one of those rams goes down. Um, so quite nice micro there from Hera, but he's got another one going. Now these stone walls are going to start being really, really awkward indeed for Hera to deal with. Uh, is Hera going to be able to get back into this or is this just too much damage? He's going to try a counterattack, and this is the, the desperation counterattack when you know you can't defend. This stone wall ensures that these archers will never die, because horses cannot go on the walls and Hera has no other units. So, um, I actually like the, the, the stone wall and the tower there, because that will be extremely hard, hard to take down. And this TC, once it goes down, Hera's economy kind of stops growing. So even though his castle, uh, Abbas's economy will continue growing, he's going to make more and more workers. And the TC is burning down, the villagers coming out, but he's going to start sniping workers and this kind of goes from uh, bad to worse. There are a lot of knights though and B needs to be careful. If these knights get an opportunity to counterattack, uh, it's going to be very hard for Abbas's player to kill the knights if he doesn't have spearmen ready. And I don't think he, yeah, he has no barracks, so... It can still be kind of scary for B if he's not careful. And we've seen a bit of a cleanup here in the end. That was a lot of archers going down to those lances. And I tell you what, all of a sudden, B with not very many units left. And that town center might not even go down. It's on low HP, but 
He's got absolutely nothing to defend that ram. In fact, he's now going to start repairing the town center, so it's going to be completely fine. And that was a bit of a cleanup. Not very many units left at all right now for um, B. I don't know if we call that a throw or not, but... Oh, man. I mean, you called it. He wouldn't be able to fight off those Castle Age units, and that seems to be pretty accurate. And now, all of a sudden, attack turns to defense as Hera is pushing forward with his units, lances and horsemen, pushing in, and he's going to start cleaning up these horsemen as well. Huge, huge trouble for B all of a sudden. And you know what? Beastie, one thing that we were talking about just before that is the typical way Hera likes to turn around the game is one very decisive fight, and all of a sudden... He's in a dominant position, and now he's going to be the one that's going to start raiding, and I'm, 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 I'm forced to ask you the opposite question, which is, does B have a way back into this game? Uh, so, this is the, the thing now. If Hera commits, he's very all-in, because uh, with his units, specifically, because his food economy is terrible. He has 250 food per minute, which at this stage in the game is uh, not a lot. There's still an issue of Stonewall Tower that he cannot kill. There's so many towers around his base. And B is getting Spearmen. <clears throat> now, I think B obviously has a lot of workers and gold. And his best chance is to just play it safe. Just go castle, make a lot of spears, and push again. Uh, he should know. Uh, sometimes you gotta stop in the game and think, like, what can my opponent do? And we see Hera just kind of desperate engaging into uh, the Abbasid, but uh, there's too many Spearmen. And Abbasid Spears are really, really good, guys. So... Losing all the units, and don't think he has a plan B for this one. Yeah, and that one was an absolute revert cleanup there. Exact opposite of we previously just saw. Hera taking all of his units straight into B's base, and they're getting cleaned up. And now we see this to and fro action where Hera marches into B's base, gets slaughtered. B marches into Hera's base, gets slaughtered. And now B's the one, all of a sudden, taking his mass forward again. Although, I mean, there are a couple of lances making their way around the back of B's base, but probably not enough to do a huge amount and yeah, so Hera is doing this style that was very good in pre, like you know, before the patch with animation cancelling. But these kinds of uh, rush castle go three stable knights, I, I it just doesn't work anymore. Like knights are, you know, their damage increase got extremely nerfed due to animation cancel being gone, and they're just kind of <laughs> regular units now. They're not hero units anymore. B is actually losing a lot of workers to lancers, which he does not see on the gold. Uh, that's a lot of workers dying actually oh, to wow. two Lancers and he still doesn't see. That is a bloodbath on the battlefield. So, oh no, so many workers going down, so many villagers dropping. That must be eight or nine villagers and still more are going down. And he's just, he notices now after just about all of his gold economy was wiped out. Yeah, and Hera now is uh, ahead 13 workers because of that. Oh B my God. is going to Castle Age, though, and once he gets, gets Castle Spearman, uh, he will be fighting Palace Guards very soon. So I do think that there there, there was a ch you know chance uh, a miss there for B to end the game. He had really, really good economy, but losing all those workers might set him back uh, a little bit to where he might need to recover. And he really needs to take care of these Lancers somehow and uh, try to just kind of collect himself create some siege units, some mangonels, when he gets to castle and try to uh, push again. A very weird game this one has been. Uh, on a couple of moments, these look to be really be in the ascendancy and he's just had kind of like these big fatal errors. First of all, over committing in Hera's base and now so many villagers being lost there. Um, we're seeing lots of notif attack notifications going off there, but that's just being caused by those outposts still firing into buildings. Um, and now Hera with the, the forward house and now moving forward. He's now got some of these palace guards going to start moving in, trying to do some damage. But quite an evenly poised game here. I mean, Hera feels like he's in a position where he can still continue putting in the pressure. But again, those units just being marched to their very quick death as that palace guard gets absolutely shredded there in B's base. Whose position do you like if you're a betting man right now, Beastie? Who are you calling it for? Uh, probably Hera, just because of the worker count. I think that, ooh, Hera's actually making uh, Clock Tower uh, Nest of Bees, but 
B just constructed a spring gold and he can do more with that. Hera has six palace cards and that is a large, uh, large army from the Abbasids. And he's just gonna kill the, the siege units of Hera, which is a huge investment because they cost 300, 300. And not only that, uh, there's something to consider in this patch is they cost a lot of production time on that uh, landmark. And Hera's army just gets completely, completely wiped out. B is moving forward. I think he's trying to drop a keep. But he doesn't have stone? Yeah, he needs 800. Okay, he just bought stone. And, now and he's going for very, very aggressive keep. What? I mean, I like it, but he needs to be careful not to lose workers. And he is losing a lot of workers there. Oh, we've got, we've got a bit of a doubt castle situation going on. So many workers are dropping. So many villagers going down. I think that's six or seven going down. Is he going to manage to even get this up? He is going to manage to get it up because now he's got the spearman defending. I think he's going to be able to get it up. 700 more HP to go, but at what cost? Oh, and it, and the fort does go up, but was that worth it? I'm not quite sure. A lot lost, but now he's going to be able to really take the center map quite well. Uh, we've got the clock tower spring out there, but taking loads and loads of damage now from that fort and quickly, quickly goes down. And just like that, well, B, he lost a lot, but he really managed to take the center ground. And that fort is going to be very, very annoying right now for Hera to deal with. Uh, for you, was it worth it? Was it worth losing those villages to get that fort up? No. He kind of... I think that was the second uh, throw in this game that was not worth it. The thing is, I understand the idea behind it. Like, if you throw the keep in the middle, you have a retreat point, you know, and, and you're kind of cutting off part of the map. But what is he really protecting here with this keep, right? Like, he's not denying anything. If he made it to the more south side and blocked two of the golds, I would get that. But he kind of just threw it in the middle. Uh, Hera had a tower, he had so many palace guards, and he just kind of tried to force the keep too, too much. And definitely, definitely did not pay off. So, uh, I feel like Hera was in a very bad position. And this is the thing about overcommitting and, and kind of all inning in feudal. There's a point where you have to all in, right? Because you're making production buildings, you're making units. But there's also a point where if you do enough damage, it's always safer to transition and tech up, then keep, you know, all leaning and going for it. And B in this game decided to just keep making horsemen, keep making archers. Hera barely saved his TC, barely survived, and then got the castle units out and completely kind of mopped up uh, B with that one, so. Now we've got a trebuchet going up, so that's quite fun to see. A, uh, a post, um, a post patch trebuchet. Of course, these trebuchets, their accuracy has got much better recently. So, gonna be interesting to see that we didn't see very much tre in terms of trebuchets previously um, in the game. So that's very interesting to uh, to see that finally go up right uh, happen right now. And he's not got much to defend. In fact, he's not got anything to defend this keep with. So that keep's actually gonna go down. Um, a little bit quickly now because he's not got any villagers to repair it. Take a little look inside Hera's base and seems to be doing just about fine and not quite sure what the answer now is going to be from 3D because, yeah, as you said, that, that was a very expensive keep to get down and it's not going to last very long at all. That's going to drop very, very quickly indeed. Um, and now 3DB... Not really quite sure what his strategy is going to be from here. We can take a little look at the villager count. We've got 53 villagers now for Hera. Take a look at 3D. And he's only got 38. So all of a sudden, a huge differential in score going on right now. Another small raid, but very annoying raid coming in from Hera. What, only one villager goes down. But he didn't lose any units while doing it. That keep is now on fire and going to go down any second. Yeah, this is a very low eco game for both players. You know, they're 24 minutes in, one has 38, one has 54 workers. Um, you know, they're both in one TC for a while. And Hera's gonna start clearing up these towers so he can get access to his wood again because he's been mining wood or chopping wood on the left side of the map, which, you know, there isn't a lot of. So, um, I don't know, I think, I think Hera definitely has an advantage right now. He is controlling the middle with this one tower. It's not a, you know, huge uh, kind of control, but it is something. No one captured any of the relics, if I'm not mistaken. No one's going for Sacred Sides, so that's something that one of the players can try to take advantage of. But B's army is just completely... Oh yeah, he just captured the first relic, actually, my bad. But B has six units, guys. Uh, that's, uh, that's not enough. Uh, no. Those trebuchets now just, well, they're gonna just start taking down these outposts. 
And now another big move coming in right now from Hera. He's pushing in with those palace guards. They're moving in very, very quickly. And as you said, B's only got six units, so no idea what he's planning to do to defend it. He's not got any units, and he's also not got any... Um, any well he's significantly behind in terms of villages so this looks to be a very very tricky situation now for b he looked very strong in the ascendancy at the beginning of this game but those spring olds even if they aren't as strong as they once were they're very difficult to deal with they're moving in there is a mangonel sitting there for b but he's not going to be able to do very much with that mangonel while there's three spring olds on the field so that's why he's choosing to keep that mangonel right out of sight right now um Springles are actually still managing to one-shot these units one by one. Also, you know, now they're going to start to... They can one-shot villagers as well, so that villager's going to be shot and go down very quickly, and indeed it does. So a very all-over-the-place and interesting game right now, but in a mirror of what we saw at the beginning of the game, Hera is now the one parked stoutly outside B's base, and this is going to get very, very difficult indeed, so... Uh, it doesn't look like to me that like there's any response B can possibly mount here, especially with such a low eco. And now we've got a very, very aggressive keep coming in from here. And when that keep goes yeah, up, that... life's going to get very difficult. Yeah, that's how you do the keep. When you control the map and you try to reinforce the position. Uh, you know, because there's no way that this keep does not go up. Um, and it's just going to secure this position and secure the victory for Hera. I think B might just GG when he sees the keep. But there's just too many units at this point. Uh, Hera doesn't even need to push in. He can just siege up with trebuchets and just wait there. Um, he probably doesn't even know how many units uh, B has, but it is uh, it is not a lot. He's trying to snipe that Ma Mangonel, which uh, is running away. Keeps going up and uh, not looking good. Yeah, that keeps going up very, very quickly. Plenty of villagers on that. Personally, I love seeing these trebuchets in the game. Such an underrepresented unit prior to this patch. So hopefully that's a sign of things to come. You could go whole tournaments without seeing a trebuchet previously, but good fun to see them now. And he's got no answer to that trebuchet at all. He's got a mangonel, but that's not going to do him much good. Needs some spring odds of his own. Uh, interestingly, not many horsemen, even though they've been significantly buffed against her. Uh, and another keep going up right inside B's base right now. Surely that's the one where he sees this and he just wants to get out. Look at this. This is a horrible side of your B. Keeps all over the place. Yeah, <clears throat> it's time to, uh, to leave the game. And he does leave the game. Oh, boy. Well, that is... That is a GG. A very decisive win in the end for Hera. Very, very quick comeback. GG for Hera. That was very, very impressive. Indeed, he looked to be in trouble early. One big decisive win. Looked like B had his chances to win that game, though, Beastie. Yeah, I think he made a couple of uh, couple of mistakes there, but he was definitely in a very, very good position. And I will say, like, Hera did win that game, and he kind of... Once he got to Castle... He kind of played it the way he was supposed to, you know, because he's very experienced with castle knights and just castles in general. But I think it's, again, I'm not sure. Maybe he's been practicing a lot of Chinese. I don't know. But uh, the early game with Chinese definitely looked like very shaky and he just wasn't able to defend what, what B had. But I do feel like that B made some critical um, mistakes that, this should have definitely been his game. And I think this is one of those games where B knows this himself. You know, he looks at this game and he says, I should.